The recovery room was painted in a stark white. Ide sat in his gown, giving a passing interest to the soccer match behind him. The warm TV light was too much for his right eye anyway. Even years after the incident, he was used to having nothing to do. Ide? Over here. Ide, the doctor will see you now. He quickly returned to the office, trying his best to ignore the stairs. His doctor was still reading his chart when Ide came in. Ide, have a seat. Ide did so trying his best to ignore the rush of anxiety. How's life been treating you? It's fine, I guess. Any concerns? Heart issues? Fainting? No, not really. It all stopped once I started at Luxacat. Good news all around then. Well, that's nice to hear. Are you okay? You sound like you have some bad news. Yeah. The doctor stood from his chair to lower the blinds. Turning to eye, he had a hard time looking at him his eyes never lasting more than a second on Ide's face. Well, we've been hard at work to contact anyone who'd be willing to help out. And frankly, no one responded. It appears we're at a dead end. I'm deeply sorry. Ide sat in the driveway with his car. The rain provided some soft noise for his disappointment. Inside, he felt numb, cauterized against hope. Cynically, he looked at his reflection. Half man, half tiger. His right eye black and dull, covered by bright orange fur. His skin seamlessly sewn in with the skin of the tiger. From the outside, it was quite the sight. Inside, it was painful. The tiger's skull carelessly mashed with his own. The skin was always so tight on his skull that he could never sleep properly without help. The worst pain came from the stares of everyone. No matter where he went, he could never find peace. Of course, no one said anything to him out of fear or pity. Even after being rescued, he was still a circus oddity. He pushed the mirror away, pulling out his phone to text someone before leaving his car. In the soft rain, he entered an empty home. On the kitchen counter sat shattered family pictures. On the kitchen floor sat molded food, barely touched by the rats that roamed the house. Ige calmly put something in his pocket before leaving his house. He stopped at the entrance to look at a picture of a happy man holding a young girl. He gave a brief smile before wincing in pain. Looking back at the picture, he placed his paw over the man's face, pushing it in so hard it cracked. Licking the blood off his paw, he closed his door. While in his car, he received a call. What? The man on the phone began to scream at him. I have to, okay? He took from me. From you. I'm not doing that. I'm just going to talk to him. He sat in silence, letting the heavy rain guide him to his destination. When he got close enough, he parked his car in their driveway. He pried a window open, slinking into the empty house. Moving carefully, he took time to see the pictures on the man's wall. He was sitting with a happy wife and child behind a waterfall. Ide moved past the photos and into the man's bedroom. There, he saw the famous doc, Boss. Pulling the gun from his jacket, he placed it softly on the man's head. He then gave out a loud roar of a tiger. The man woke up panicking and grabbing an eyed, failing to pull the gun away. His wife screamed, falling out of bed, scrambling for their gun. Eyed! Please! Stop! Why should I? Benny's wife pulled out a pistol from under the bed. You put him down. Barb, honey, put the gun down, okay? I'm not going to hurt him, Barb. I just want to talk. Barb looked at her husband. Barb, please. Barb dropped the gun to the floor. Now, Ide, you're safe. What do you want to talk about? Why did you make me? What? Ide growled, the sound bouncing around the room. Ide? I don't know. It was a job, okay? You know this. When you saw me, on the table you had no qualms? None, okay? None. It was a different time. How? I was blinded by the money. I regret it every day. Every single day. 
Do you love your family? What? You know what I said. Yeah, I do. You what? I do love my family. I did too. Taking the pistol to his head, he shot himself. His hybrid body fell to the ground. I'd watched as his vision got blurry, as blood pooled around him. He could feel it warmly touch the scruff of his fur as his eyes fell.